there, Christopher Thunder here from the World's Dirtiest Workshop and welcome back to part two of the polycarbonate or plastic bender machine. I have just finished adding a coat of poly. I did a lot of work on this simple little machine up to this point. Uh, I recessed the screws. I added some button head screws to give it a nice little machine look. Um, I cleaned up the hinges and made sure that the function is really good here. And I added a paper towel in between these two panels so that I don't accidentally glue this shut and ruin the machine. So here's how I got from part one to the end of part two. Today we're going to talk about panel assembly. Uh, if you're getting into woodworking for the first time, this is one of the easiest things that you'll learn to do. You might have some panels that you need to assemble. Uh, these are MDF, they're not plywood, but uh, the behavior is basically the same. You have a bunch of screws, you have some plywood, and you're trying to screw it together. Surface to surface. So surface, surface, together, running a screw through. When you drill out a hole, the material comes out. However, when you run a screw down through the hole, uh, you create pressure and the material has to go somewhere. Usually it winds up bulging out around the screw. And what that means is, is when you're going to assemble something, it doesn't always go together perfectly. Uh, your, your parts develop bulges in them and uh, you can't get the panels to mate completely flat. So, you know, how do you fix that kind of a thing? Well, plan on doing it more than once. Unscrew the panels, grab some sandpaper, and sand off the bulges that you created with the screws. Then, glue the panels together and screw them back together. And you're going to find everything fits a lot better. Here's an example. So I've removed the screws from this hinge and flipped it over. And you're going to see bulges where the screws were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some old sandpaper, about 120 grit, and I'm just going to rub through those. This is why MDF is really wonderful because uh, you don't have to worry about splinters so much and uh, sanding off the little bulges. So now those bulges are removed and I can put that hinge back down. I can drop some glue into the holes and screw them back into place and I don't have to worry about those hinges failing or breaking out. I grabbed a bunch of screws from my screw kit to make this project, and a lot of them had already been partially stripped. If you have a problem like that, make yourself a very long screwdriver. You've only got a couple shots at this, so you want to go as straight as possible. Don't use your screw gun again, because you'll just wind up stripping out that screw and making it a lot worse. So if you want to save your screws, you have a limited supply, Remove your screws by hand and then screw them back down by hand, going very straight. That way, you're not wasting screws. After removing the top panel, I can see the nails sticking through where I banged in the feet. And uh, that's going to be a problem if you're going from the underside and attaching parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a completely different tool to solve that problem. So I'm going to go in with my sandpaper. Wow, that, that one is really tall. Now that is, ooh, look at that. Okay. This is a brass brush. What you want to do is use the brass brush to just remove the bulges of wood around the nails. I love MDF. MDF is a really cool material. Here's another one. 
going to clean that up. And here's another one. So uh, this bulge is a troublesome one. So I'm going to work at it a little bit. See a chip just flew off there. That has a little bit of a bulge on one side. So what I'm going to do is just take the sandpaper and go up against that nail and clean it up. When you're doing this, be careful because that nail's still sharp. I just poked myself. There we go. Now that's nice and clean. So that's smooth around the nail. That one's smooth too. So now I can take a panel and put it back on top and glue it back together and it will lay flat against the other panel. Don't forget to check the underside of the mating panel. You can see here how there's bulges everywhere. And I'm gonna to have to go back and sand off those bulges. Nice, much better. Very nice. Do I want to get rid of that label? No, it's too much trouble. I'm just going to glue right over it. When gluing panels together, don't run the glue all the way up to the edge of your workpiece. Give it about an inch. Everybody has a, a slightly different style. I've watched enough carpenters do this understand that there's a simple pattern that works pretty much all the time. And that's my glue pattern. Now it's a matter of choice. I can get a, a credit card or something and spread all that out and that's fine. But when I squeeze the wood together these lines will get thicker and it'll give me the kind of adhesion that I need for MDF. So I don't need 100% perfect surface to surface adhesion. I just want to make my workpiece stronger so that it lasts a few years. Now it's time to flip the part over, get the orientation correct, and reassemble. And because of the nails that are underneath, those are the nails from the feet top part's going to go on perfectly where it was. And I can feel that the panels are mating perfectly this time, even with the glue in between. And I can start screwing it back together. And I'll get a really solid attachment from the upper panel to the lower panel. What I'm going to do is flip the hinges back over. I'm going to get my screws. I'm going to hand turn them in. Some of these screws are longer than others by a millimeter or two. Some people, what they do is they, they get out their bench grinder and grind off the tips so that uh, they don't push through anymore. But I have feet underneath here to give this, uh, you know, about five millimeters off the table. So when I screw this in, it's gonna go in without a problem. I'm going to reduce the setting on my drill gun to about half. Make sure that it's set to tighten clockwise. And I'm going to run these in real carefully. If you hear thumping, that usually means your screw gun is not going in straight. So that might be thumping that's straight. Or the screw is up, thumping straight. So when you do hear thumping while you're screwing in, straighten your screw gun.
align the screw gun with the screw. See, very little thumping. Thumping, so I'm gonna realign the screw gun. Now, it didn't thump early in the process, but as I screwed the screw down, it began to thump. That is a problem with the screw developing tension and friction, and uh, the head of the screw gun slipping. If that's happening, go easier. I'm going to get these really close with the screw gun, just to save time. And then I'm going to go the rest of the way by hand with a screwdriver. Having a, a quick release screwdriver is a really great idea. Just like in the movies, you know, when the guys with the guns, you know, when they drop the magazine out. Okay, so that doesn't have a little ball in it to hold these pieces together. Sometimes I tape this joint so it stays together. This one has a little ball in it to hold the bit into place. This one has no such connection. Having a super long screwdriver for doing delicate work is really a great idea. I don't want to strip my screws out. You can see it thumps there. I'm just going to screw it in really slow and easy. Take your time. If you really care about your wood projects and you don't want to screw them up, don't use your screw gun on the highest setting because you'll just blow through your material and uh, you'll wind up having to do your project over again. Many of these screws, because they've been in my toolkit for so long and, and probably been used a few times, they're starting to strip out. That doesn't mean that you should waste them. Okay, yeah, they, they look terrible, and they're kind of beat up and half stripped. But, that doesn't mean you can't use them. This project doesn't have to look real perfect. It really just has to work. And that's the key. It has to work and last a few years. My goals are simple, longevity and function. Got the back screws in. When you have many screws, start from a corner and work to the other corner to squeeze the glue out. Spread the glue out around in between the panels. Again, I could have smeared the glue to get a nice thin film on the panel. It's not important to me right now. That's going to take a lot of time. I just want to get the panels together. And I don't want to over torque it. So I'm using my hand to feel the torque. And I'll know when that's right. Use your eyes to check the depth. So now the depth is good on that. That's a good hinge. You're going to use this same technique to fix the doors in your house. 
screw gun in most of the way and then use a really long screwdriver to tighten down the screws. Feel with your hand and then use your eyes and your senses to make sure that it's right. Don't just use your hand to feel or use your eyeballs to look. Use more of your senses. If I could smell that, I would. But your sense of smell is not going to help you attach a hinge. You can see there, that that's pretty good. But as I work around, I can make it better. Just by working from screw to screw, to get that very perfect. Same thing over here. My screwdriver is magnetic, so it's sticking to the hinge. There we go. One, two, and three. Even if your screws aren't in perfect condition, don't waste them. <laughs> Magnetic screwdrivers are fun. You can see this hinge is not very perfect because the screws are sticking out a little bit. Work each hinge in carefully until it's absolutely perfect. Trying to hold the camera with one hand and the screw with the other. Now you can see there that that's a nearly perfect door hinge. This other one is also nearly perfect. This is door hinge skills. How to hinge a door 100% perfectly. It takes patience and work from screw to screw and get the hinge perfectly flat and tight. You can see after I've glued the panel and screwed it together, it is very tight. Here, there's a problem in the middle. So what I want to do is maybe drill a few screws down through the middle and clamp that down before the glue dries. By moving the central drill bit down inside the outer part of the countersink bit, I can now sink that screw properly into the wood and still have all that thread to bite into the material. Attaching a screw is a skill in itself. When drilling for wood screws, there's really two parts of the screw that you have to pay attention to. The thread thickness and the shaft thickness that's not threaded. I'm gonna drill all the way down with that thickness so I can get the screw all the way in. Then I'm gonna come back with a countersink bit and drill only that distance. If you don't have a countersink bit because it's broken, you can always go to the grinder and make a countersink bit by flattening one side of the drill bit. You're going to need a hex key wrench to open the lock. Funny thing, out of all my hex keys, this one, which is metric, is the only one that fits this American standard measurement. So, the one tool that isn't supposed to fit is the one that fits. And now I'm going to make this countersink bit. To do this right, set the drill bit length so it only drills half the length of the screw. That way when it countersinks, 
you still have all this extra thread meat to go into the material. So you can see this bit has been pushed halfway down and then locked into place. To set a screw properly, drill the hole first and then use the countersink bit to make sure that the screw is countersunk. So here's my screw gun. I'm going to manually remove that bit. I had to turn that all the way up to remove the screwing bit. Now I'm going to install the first drill bit. I'm going to do two holes here in the middle of the material. So let's see if we can slide that back. All the way through. All the way through. I've removed that bit. Now we're going to go in for the countersink bit. Now that one's in place. Go easy. Go just deep enough to countersink the head of that screw. Don't push real hard. Little by little, get it right. If you push very hard, you're going to go all the way in. And you're going to lose the benefit of that screw. Go slow. Straighten it up. And tighten as the last part. My screws always seem to fall into the nooks and crannies of my project. One more time. Straighten it up. Now these are squeezing some of the glue out so I'm putting a little pressure on them. I don't want to turn them so hard that I break through the MDF and lose the benefit of the screw. When I'm sliding my polycarbonate around, I don't want to scratch it on that screw. So I've determined that I'm putting too much pressure on that screw. So I'm going to back them out. Back them out by hand first. Back to the countersink bit again. Now that's attached again. Go one more time. Now that's below the surface and that won't scratch. When I go to cover this with a poly coating, you won't be able to feel those at all. Don't push real hard because you'll grind away the MDF. Now that I put the two screws down through the middle, the two panels are joined 100% correctly. 
This is how you check a countersink hole. Put the screw into the hole. Does the head just drop in just enough to go below the hole? I'm all the way in there. So I'm not wasting material and I'm going to get a good bite on that screw. Sometimes I like giving my wood projects that, uh, you know, machine look. So what I'll do is I'll grab some screws that are the wrong type of head and I'll use them to improve the strength of my project and give it a really cool look. So that looks pretty cool and is a lot stronger. When I opened up the door, I noticed that the screws were sticking out underneath and I had some bulges in the wood, so I began to grind. And then I noticed this crack. So am I nervous? Am I upset? No, not really. What I'm, what I'm going to do is just put a little glue on it and work that glue into the crack. Now, I just want to make sure that this corner isn't sticking out more than it should be. So I'm going to get out my file and grind that off a little bit. I don't want this corner sticking out more than it should be, so I'm going to get out my file and grind that off so it doesn't break off. Even though the glue hasn't set, I'm going to very gently fix that corner. So I don't wind up losing that corner while I'm using the machine. I can see that that corner is really sticking out. What I'm doing is I'm just perfecting the corner. Add another dab of glue and let it dry. How to check it? Get a file. Hear it dragging. So that tells me that that metal part is raised. Keep going until you don't hear the sound anymore, or the sound is greatly reduced. There we go. That's much better. Same thing over here. Same thing up here. It binds a little bit right there, so... When your file binds up, it tells you you have a raised surface. Awesome. Don't forget to erase your pencil marks as best you can. I don't really care. I, I could leave all these numbers and arrows on here and it really wouldn't matter to me at all. MDF is nice because things erase really easily. There's a big old X here that I have to erase. There's a number there. There's a big old X here that I have to erase. There's some numbers there. And an arrow. There's an arrow. I'm not going to be able to get the R and the up off of that hinge without using some alcohol or something. I'm not going to worry about it because, you know, it's a fun project. I know I can erase a uh, permanent marker. Start again. <clears throat> I know I can erase permanent marker with uh, electronics cleaner and that'll go away. But. I don't want to get solvent in here right now. I'm going to clear coat this with poly and uh, I'm going to move forward. This is a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing this. It's not a job, it's, it's fun. Before you apply the, the poly, 
get an old wash rag and blow off as much of the dust as you can. Give your door one last functional test. Yep, looking good. Everything's recessed the way I like it. Feels good. Got my Terminator looking screws here, the machine screws. Future tech screws. Looks good, looks real good. Looks great. So now we're ready for poly, and this is going to be fun. Got an old can of polyurethane that you just want to preserve, but you can't close it anymore? Stick it in a Ziploc bag. That poly will stay for a year or two more, even though the can... That poly will keep for a year or two more, even though the can doesn't close anymore. So I just saved that can by putting it in a Ziploc bag. If you're going to poly coat your whole project, don't neglect the bottom. The idea that I used this can of polymer months ago to coat the world's dirtiest work table, and even though the can is absolutely shot, it's been opened too many times and glued itself together too many times, I could still use the polyurethane in the can because I put it in a Ziploc bag. Hmm. So good. Love it. Mmm. Got a little bit of a breeze going on here. Mmm. Grilled cheese sandwich. Mmm. So good. Mmm. Go around all the feet. Running out of place. Sandwich. <laughs> At least I wasn't silly enough to put that in my mouth. My work table is just a piece of plywood.
if you want to get rid of these letters, just like over here, you have to remember that you polycoated this first, and there's going to be polyurethane over top of those letters. So, spray your paper towel with CRC QD Electronics Cleaner, and then keep rubbing until the letters come off. But you're going to have to cut through the polyurethane first. See, it's dissolving the poly from the hinge. And that's good enough for me. Don't forget to poly coat the inside so that it's protected inside and out. Check your hinges to make sure that they're fine and that there aren't any problems. This is how I discovered that I can't close it all the way. Is I got all the screws sunk as far as they'll go. And because some of them really weren't designed for these hinges, they're not fully recessed into the hinges. They're recessed pretty well, but not all the way. I can put little stops over here so that this won't break by accident, and that might be a really good idea. But for now, it is what it is. So sometimes things go wrong. Later on, I can always unscrew the screws and put in new ones that are a little bit better, a little bit more flush. Or I can try and grind down the heads so that the hinges close 100%. I'm just about to poly coat the inside and testing the function here I've noticed that the unit won't go all the way over. It actually stays up by oh I don't know an inch or so. And that's because of the height of the screws. So you can see there the screws won't let it go all the way over. But that's good enough for the bender. So for now I'm just going to put a piece of wood right here. And I'm going to polyurethane the inside of the door, here and here. Don't forget to polycoat the inside so that it's protected inside and out. Check your hinges to make sure that they're fine and that there aren't any problems. This is how I discovered that I can't close it all the way. Is I got all the screws sunk as far as they'll go. And because some of them really weren't designed for these hinges, they're not fully recessed into the hinges. They're recessed pretty well, but not all the way. I can put little stops over here so that this won't break by accident, and that might be a really good idea. But for now, it is what it is. So sometimes things go wrong. Later on, I can always unscrew the screws and put in new ones that are a little bit better, a little bit more flush, or I can try and grind down the heads so that the hinges close 100%. Mail arrived. I wonder what this is. Power supply. Oh, that's a mystery. That's just a box. Wait a minute, I see a label. Nichrome wire. Awesome. How to open the box. There we go. What I did was I ordered uh, different samples. 
Now the problem with um, making this work is you have different voltage and different current. Those two things together create your power. And the amount of power you put through a wire will determine how hot something gets. So, I got a variable power supply and a sample set of nichrome wire that I can test with. Isn't this going to be fun? What did I say? This is Christopher Thunder, and I'll see you next time. Ooh, okay. Yeah, 200. 200 degrees, 500 degrees, 600 degrees! Woohoo! 700 degrees! I better shut this thing off. <laughs> I'm gonna unplug it. <laughs> wow!